Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Philbar. Welcome to session Fartook-20. The last episode featured some shadowy figures discussing some behind-the-scenes action, while Welby and Sister Elaine continued to hunt for Gregor Finewire to deliver the strange box to him. After finding out more about the captured criminals from the sewers, they left the tavern only to discover that a body had been dredged out of the bay. Upon seeing the corpse, Sister Elaine recognized it as Gregor Finewire. We rejoin the pair as the cleric hurries her associate up the hill towards the city gate. I'm going, I'm going, take it easy, spouted the halfling as the cleric dragged her companion up the hill at a fast pace. Can't we slow down? My legs aren't nearly as long as yours, he continued before stumbling. Out of breath, Sister Elaine scanned the area for Gregor's associates but did not recognize anyone on the crowded street. Welby O'Toole looked around and also didn't notice anything unusual. The cleric quickly explained what the High Bishop had told her and pointed out that Gregor had been with several salty associates. Explaining that the muscle of the group was back in Phoenix, she wanted to get them before they were spotted and problems ensued. The rogue thought for a moment before grabbing her arms and then rushing her up the hill. Come on! What, what are you waiting for, woman? Several minutes passed and the pair were able to pass through the gates and were recognized by some of the grateful citizens. Searching for their friends, they noticed that Cabe Silverton and Lady Irena were walking towards them. They were each decked out in new apparel, carrying a bag presumably filled with their old clothing. They hailed the pair but quickly noticed the concern on the cleric and they pulled her away from the well-wishers. With both out of breath, the richly dressed associates glanced around and pointed towards a nearby tavern to duck into. The well-lit establishment was quite raucous, with the crowd chanting, Drink! 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 Warming their way through the drunken patrons, they found a small booth in the corner. Sitting quickly, Cabe looked over to the celebration and muttered, Oh, great! under his breath, and whisked into the revelers. At this point, the other three members of the group looked over to see Fargus Stoutheart three steins into a drinking contest. Quaffing the last of the suds in the fourth cup, he slammed the heavy mug down on the table and threw up his hands. The crowd erupted with money changing hands and an immense amount of cheering. Cabe found his way through the celebration and began a Fargus, Fargus chant, which was quickly picked up by the other intoxicated patrons. Lady Irena grabbed the drunken ranger and dragged him over to the table while Cabe collected the man's winnings, which include a lacy handkerchief of unknown origin. The bard scanned the room, but did not notice the owner. He, two barmaids, and the bartender began to usher the crowd out as Fargus's two opponents passed out under the table that they were drinking on, and Cabe rejoined his associates. A glassy-eyed Fargus attempted to focus in on his associates and began to engage them in a loud conversation, but had to be told several times to lower his voice as he retold the group of his vict- advice I won! before passing out face first onto the table. The group looked at their friend and nodded disapprovingly. Welby ordered a strong herbal tea for the ranger, and the four individuals sat alone in the booth with the ranger having slipped down on the floor. Sister Elaine explained the circumstances of the search along with the information garnered in the tavern. After several interruptions from Welby on his clever nicking of the dagger, the pair of elves pondered the information given. Lady Irena spoke up and pointed out that neither Gregor nor his goons had noticed the women when they spotted him. It was her opinion that they were in the clear of being recognized. They were surprised that her mentor in the temple had confided in the underworld information, 
and Cabe pointed out that Welby had dodged a spear with that. The halfling was confused and the bard explained that Welby, having missed a deadline, would have most likely suffered some type of punishment, adding a throat slashing gesture. The rogue grasped his throat in a protective manner and considered what could have happened. He refocused when Lady Irena pointed out that the box now belonged to Welby, free and clear, which brought a smile to the rogue's face. I would keep that thing hidden if I were you, Welby, informed Sister Elaine. If Gregor was a member of the Underworld, surely someone else will be aware of the item and it could get you into trouble. The others nodded as Fargus, still under the table, passed gas loudly. The group shook their heads again disapprovingly and continued to formulate a plan. I still can't figure out how to open the damn thing, so it's little use to me, stated the confused halfling. Perhaps I should have Fargus smash that thing with his sword. Lady Arena argued that it could be trapped and that action could have a devastating effect on all parties concerned. Her hand then shot to her nose and her eyes began to water. Perhaps you could see it. Maybe an interested pawn dealer could give you a few coins, <coughs> a few coins for that, <coughs> as Cabe began to cough loudly and looked ill. By this time, all present could smell the gas that Fargus had passed, and each had tears in their eyes as they fanned the air before exiting the booth. Dear Dilo, is he dead? exclaimed Lady Irena as the group looked under the table at the collapsed human. Another loud exit of gas followed by childish giggling from the drunken warrior. No, he only smells like it, said Cabe Silvertongue as he pinched his nose. We should probably get him back to the room and let him sleep it off. We can regroup tomorrow and discuss what the future holds, remarked Sister Elaine. The group nodded and looked at each other, then back to Fargus, then back to each other. Odds? asked Cabe, and the group nodded. One, two, three, go, he said, and everyone extended several fingers. A smile crossed Lady Irena's face as she looked down. Cabe, Elaine, and Welby had each extended two fingers, with the mage throwing three fingers in. I will lead the way while you carry the drunken sock, she exclaimed proudly. The threesome then dragged Fargus out from under the table and attempted to carry him, with Welby getting between his legs. Cabe and Sister Elaine each slung an arm over their shoulders and walked the man out. Lady Irena settled up on the tab and was surprised that the hero owed nothing. She graciously tipped both waitresses and the barkeep before catching up to her friends. Dodging many well-wishers and at least two people chanting, Fargus! They finally arrived at the Phoenix Inn. Upon entering, Lady Irena noticed a figure in the shadows across the street, but when she turned back around, the figure was gone. She scoffed at her imagination playing tricks on her. The large ranger was dumped unceremoniously into his bed when the group brought him up to the second floor. Another round of gas escaped, along with more giggling from the human. The others went to their own rooms, and Sister Elaine and Lady Irena again shared a room. The mage peeked out of the second story, but saw no one outside. Something out there? inquired the cleric. But Irena brushed it off, saying she was just tired. With everyone exhausted from a busy day, sleep came quickly to each member of the group. We close out this episode now, and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.